don't often get the chance to draw as much as I would like to, so today's going to be a real treat for me. It's nothing like sort of getting back behind the pencil. I'm using a 2B pencil to start with, so and the beauty with that is that it's going to just leave a very soft light mark. So this is the real building blocks of this subject. The one thing I relearned that I had almost forgotten was just how crucial getting lines in in the correct spot. Because with pencil onto paper, you can use a needable rubber and remove them, but not perfectly so. And I think that's why when it comes to watercolour, drawing is uh, of the highest priority, but it really does go for all painting that the better we can draw, it just sets us up for success. Because in my first uh, 12 months of painting, I was quickly identified that I could mix paint and apply paint and keep it clean and do all that sort of stuff. But my skill to reproduce what I was looking at and getting an interesting and even finding an interesting subject was kind of lacking. So I went off and did a drawing course with a really marvellous pastel artist. And normally the pastel artists, watercolour artists, they're really strong with their drawing and their drawing skill. And you can see me rubbing there. I'm not sort of angered by a mistake. That's more just spreading the lead. The, the lead, the graphite, is the medium. So we're either spreading it, removing it, uh, moving it around. And that's how we build up the values as well. Just got to be careful that I don't uh, sort of with a sweaty finger or something or a bit of moisture on the finger sort of just mark the paper. Uh, here I'm just coming in getting some of those little sort of uh, darks in. I do love drawing this type of subject because it's almost a work of art in itself. So really all I'm needing to do is reproduce the shapes. I'm not reinventing the an object or a, uh, the building so yeah so I can just go with the, the shapes that are there but getting some shadows I think I'll find difficult with this one because it's fully fully cast with shadows in the foreground but that's where using that smudging technique really does help and I don't think there's any right or wrong way to actually hold a pencil. Uh, you'll find I've sort of drifting between sort of the, the classic sort of handwriting where this is more the underhand one. What I'm able to do with this one is get more of the flat edge. So it's excellent for doing foliage. And then when I go back to the more handwriting one, that's really good for more of the sharp edges and those finished little nuances but we do need to be patient uh, the other thing is just how much physicality is involved with spreading the the graphite and pushing the graphite around when we have a brush it's nearly up to an inch wide and we're able to just blast in big shapes big darks even yeah, nice big lights it, almost in an instant where this is very old school, but it should be in everyone's schooling because it's really, I think, the, the one element that I'm so thrilled that I put the time in and the work in because I, I think it is truly what's made me the artist that I was to become. When you sort of go back in time, you think, oh, Jesus, this drawing stuff is it, is it going to pay off? Is it going to work? And But I think for me, I, I've always loved the, the art of sketching. And it's always been something that I think um, I found um, not naturally easy, um, but just enjoyable. There, there was, it's like you could be out drawing, drawing in the studio and an hour or hour and a half can go in and in a flash. So here I am 
just building up these darks. And um, also, one of the great strengths is that pencil drawing, a little like monochromatic paintings, it does teach us how to get a light effect, how to see light. Because light does have a, a contrast register. And if we don't go dark enough, and that's normally the number one thing that most artists will do, is not getting our darks dark enough. Because ultimately, if you've got a white board or a white piece of paper, we've gone as light as you need. So really, I'm adding the darks and the mid-tones and all the subtle little values. And this is There's a big tree in the background, and I kind of had to almost invent my own sort of approach when it came to uh, drawing and getting a sort of realistic rendition of foliage. But the important part is to always remember that in most cases, it really is just the backdrop. It's not the feature. So I'm thinking no repetition, good strong darks, because that's one of the other things with foliage. We'll do a little passage and we go, oh, geez, that felt good, looked great. So we go and repeat it. And that's another great lesson in our work is to not to repeat a shape or not have them the equal distance apart or any repetition. Because ultimately, even though this is a man-made structure, we're trying to uh, mimic nature which has its own balance. And if you can imagine, if no one lived in this area ever, and this just got overgrown, nature just comes back to claim its own setting. As you can see, I've really had to push some of these darks. I've only got a 6B, which is my, is what I normally would think is a nice uh, dark uh, graphite but I think the lesson that I've learned is that I can go up to an 8B so I think I've already bought some new ones so any future drawings will incorporate sort of from 2B to 8B but of course you don't really see too many of the early marks in the finished drawing and that's that's how it's meant to be but you can see I'm starting to get that little bit of depth in under the rotunda. It's a domed rotunda. And that to a degree is a little too symmetrical, I guess, but once again, we can use the background. And you can see how I've already got a nice bit of smudging going up in the sky. It's just giving us a faint idea of the overall shape. Yep, and I think with certain parts, you almost go into a bit of a trans actually it's almost like uh, you go on to automatic pilot and you just know what needs to be done it removes any sort of fear or worry factor so i do love when i'm at that stage in the drawing you can see the drawings going well and then it's a time just to relax and really step into the role in the reference, there wasn't the foliage up around the back of the, the rotunda, but once again, we are well and truly able to finesse and fine tune things just as we, we can become the creator a little bit as well. There is a big gum tree or a big tree here, and I was tempted to leave it out because I thought, is it going to draw the attention away? It's another vertical upright. But the further I went on, I thought, no, a, a, a tree will, will actually give it scale as well. Because I was deliberately not putting any figures in or uh, any sort of element like that. I really wanted it to be just all about the shapes, all about the shading. So here we go again, just pushing, pushing those darks. And I think that's probably the part that actually takes most of the time is assessing those darks. 
and not actually damaging the paper because I was noticing if I got a little too stationary in one spot it would start to put sort of a, a funny shine on the paper which made it hard to see also but this one drawing has really inspired me to sort of get back and do it a little more and and it's and it's a fantastic medium to travel with uh, the amount of times that you can be going somewhere and you think oh geez I've got half an hour until the meeting or or you're catching up with someone or your train or buses arriving or you can look across and see a nice tree or a nice old house and boy 30 minutes can go in a flash and we're being constructive as well but I really did cut my teeth on plain air drawing first then I got into the plain air painting and at the time I thought to myself this is taking much longer than I thought to transition to the painting because it took me actually three years in total but now I look back and thought it was such a golden period uh, for me and I also saw a movie on Vincent van Gogh uh, and where he realized when he was I think 23 or 24 that drawing was a weakness for him um, so I thought you know what it, it seems a fairly common thing that we're not all born to be able to draw you can look at a lovely drawing or painting but that doesn't mean you can just pick up a brush or a pencil and and straight away do it so it is a learned skill I think color that is something innate but most of our uh, drawing time and life and uh, work that we do it's all learned that's where the practice the discipline and I guess the more we love doing it uh, the, the more fun it is so for me th th this was more fun than than hard work and I always felt that if it was possible to make a living just from uh, black and white pencil drawings I would have quite happily gone down that road it's such a um, lovely tactile hands-on medium to do you, you really do become part of a drawing probably not going to get a look at my fingers but by the time I finished at least two fingers are fairly covered in in the graphite we used to call them lead pencils but uh, I don't think they put any lead in them anymore I think it's more graphite I'm wrapping things up here now I just hope that you enjoyed it half as much as I did all the best see you next time